Newt Rockney, the football player, the Notre Dame coach, the nation's leader. Even with humble beginnings, Newt Rockney undoubtedly is the most influential person in American sports because of how he shaped the game of football. As a result of his resilient leadership skills, his great vision, and coaching success at the University of Notre Dame, Newt Rockney's legacy continues on the sports landscape today. Born in Voss, Norway, Newt Rockney immigrated to Chicago at the age of five. The move to the United States was to further the success of his father's business. Rockney's life was rather uneventful until he set off for college at the University of Notre Dame. Newt Rockney attended college at the University of Notre Dame at the age of 22. While in college, as a student, Rockney participated in many activities. However, the most significant talent of Newt Rockney that would eventually propel his career was that Rockney was a superb athlete. Rockney participated in the track and field team as a sprinter, quarter miler, long jumper, shot putter, and pole vaulter. And most notably, Newt Rockney was on Notre Dame's football team. It was as the result of one very impactful game that Newt Rockney changed American football forever. Prior to Newt Rockney's most famous play, football was a very violent and fatal game. The beginning years of the game of football only consisted of kicking and running. The object of the game was to fundamentally knock one another over to try and grab the ball. During the summer of 1913, Newt Rockney and his friend and teammate Gus Doreas were lifeguards in Cedar Plank, Ohio. Jesse Harper, who was the coach of the Notre Dame football team at the time, had instructed the two boys to practice a newly introduced rule, the forward pass, over the summer in preparation for the fall football season. On November 1, 1913, Notre Dame played against the Army West Point Cadets. Newt Rockney was the captain for Notre Dame as well as the starting end while Gus Reyes was the quarterback. Army was a powerhouse of a team, and if Jesse Harper wanted his team to win, he knew he needed to pull out all the stops. So Harper directed a play between Reyes and Rockney that would utilize the forward pass, a play relatively unknown to the football world, only being used a few times by some of the Ivy League teams like Yale and Harvard. Catching both players and fans off guard in the middle of the first quarter, Darius and Rockney executed the forward pass. Rockney, who loved to talk about his first use of the forward pass, accounts the event like this. Finally, Darius called my number, meaning that he was to throw a long forward pass to me as I ran down the sideline. I started limping down the field and out towards the army halfback covering me, who most yawned in my face he was that bored. I put on full speed and left him standing there, flat-footed. I raced across the army goal line as Darius whipped the ball, and the grandstand roared at the completion of a 40-yard pass. Everyone seemed astonished. There had been no hurdling, no tackling, no crushing of fiber or sinew, just a long-distance touchdown by rapid transit. A play like this was unheard of. It caught everyone off guard. The final score to this historic game was Notre Dame 35, Army 13. I, the, the 1913 Army game with um, that forward, the forward pass, being used in the way that it was. It definitely got press at the time. And the interesting thing about that is they were sort of talking about how that changed the setting for um, games in the future. The game of football had been forever transformed by this one game and one play. No longer would teams be left to kicking and running the ball. The new added factor having the ability to throw the ball was a game changer. The passing strategies that have evolved since have allowed quarterbacks and receivers in today's football arenas to earn praise for their throws and receptions. Because of the finesse, skillfulness, and ingenious play that Rockney executed, football has developed to the game it is presently. Notre Dame's 1924 football season was one of the best seasons ever. Newt Rockney's team was undefeated and also won the 1924 National Championship. As a result of winning the national championship, Notre Dame was invited to play Stanford in the 1925 Rose Bowl. However, prior to Notre Dame's team departure for the Rose Bowl, a huge fight broke out between the Notre Dame students and the Catholic-hating Ku Klux Klan. This fight generated negative publicity for the University of Notre Dame. Reverend John O'Hara, Notre Dame's president, needed to resolve the issue. O'Hara turned to Rockney to promote a respectable presence for the University of Notre Dame. 
As a result, Rockne planned a three-week cross-country trip for him and his team to visit populated cities on their journey to the 1925 Rose Bowl. The team was welcomed by thousands of adoring Notre Dame fans and greeted them in generous and gracious ways to gain a more positive image for the university as well as create a larger and deeper fan base for the football team. After their many stops in varied cities, Rockne and his so-called Wonder Team finally made it to Pasadena to take on Stanford. Rockney coached his way to success, beating Stanford 27 to 10. This trip was monumental for both the university and Newt Rockney. Notre Dame had created a household name for itself. Newt Rockney not only led his team across the country speaking about the great college known as the University of Notre Dame, but also led his team to an undefeated season against some of the hardest teams in the nation, to include Princeton, Georgia Tech, Army, Wisconsin, and Nebraska. This trip was but a glimpse of Newt Rockney's leadership legacy. The most notable reason Newt Rockney is a legendary leader is because of his great speeches. He was a master motivator. Newt Rockney would give pep talks to his players to provoke and inspire. One of Newt Rockney's greatest speeches was his locker room speech, filmed by the Studebaker Company. We're going inside him. We're going outside him. Inside him and outside him. And when we get them on the run once, we're going to keep them on the run. And we're not going to pass unless our secondary comes up too close. But don't forget, man, we're going to get them on the run. We're going to go, 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 go. And we aren't going to stop until we go to that goal line. And don't forget, man, today is the day we're going to win. Another one of Rockney's great speeches is the win one for the Gipper speech. George Gipp, the inspiration for the speech, was one of Notre Dame's best players. Unfortunately, Gipp was hospitalized because of an extreme case of strep throat. Newt Rockney talked with Gipp while he was in the hospital dying. The movie Newt Rockney All-American portrays the conversation between Gipp and Rockney like this. Rock, someday when the team's up against it, breaks are beating the boys. Ask him to go in there with all they've got. Win just one for the Gipper. After talking to Rockney, George Gipp passed away. The legend is that when Notre Dame played Army in 1928, Rockney gave a speech that was inspired by what Gipp said on his deathbed. After Rockney was done, everyone in the locker room cheered, win one for the Gipper. In that game, Notre Dame upset Army 12-6. The phrase, win one for the Gipper, is now a universal catchphrase for cheering on the underdog. Not only do Rockney's speeches embody his legacy, the speeches have endured the test of time and are evident how great a leader he was. Newt Rockney inspired his players and motivated them to work hard and win. Rockney was truly an outstanding coach, which made him an incredible leader. On March 31, 1931, Newt Rockney boarded a flight heading to California where he would have begun filming a movie called The Spirit of Notre Dame. Tragically, Rockney's plane crashed in the Flint Hills of East Kansas. Rockney was only 43 years old when he died. He had a wife and four children. Rockney's death devastated not only the university, but also the entire country. Thousands of people attended Rockney's funeral, and CBS even broadcasted it so that all of America could watch it. The players from the 1930 team carried in the coffin as they fought back tears. Herbert Hoover, President of the United States from 1929 to 1933, declared, Mr. Rockney so contributed to a cleanness and high purpose and sportsmanship in athletics that his passing is a national loss. The legend that is Newt Rockney still lives on today through memorials, speech references, and especially the Notre Dame fan base. There are several memorials that honor Newt Rockney for the magnificent contributions he gave in his lifetime. There are memorials in the Norwegian town in which he was born, two memorials in Kansas near the place he died, the Newt Rockney Memorial Athletic Building, and the statue of Newt Rockney on the University of Notre Dame campus. Additionally, there was a car produced by the Studebaker Company called the Rockney and an American ship used in World War II that was named the Newt Rockney. It is also remarkable that 11 biographies have been written about Newt Rockney and that he's been portrayed in two movies, one very famous one called Newt Rockney All-American. Newt Rockney's leadership legacy has left significant impacts on society. The nation was fortunate to be steered by Newt Rockney, the most influential person in American sports, for how he shaped the game of football and because of his leadership and coaching success.